good that he may give to him that needs. Let no corrupt communication. Somebody better. Look, we might want to read this about seven times up in this place. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You know what? Let's just do it. Just for a reminder, some of y'all getting your toes stomped right now because you've had some, you've had some, you've had some slanderous things that have come out your mouth and daddy's mad about it. You've had some gossip and God don't like gossip come out your mouth and you say, well, don't tell so-and-so God's mad about it. Amen. He don't like it. And he said, you better quit it. Better watch prophets that only tell you the good things because they're false. He said, let no corrupt. Communication, proceed out your mouth. Let's say it seven times. So let no corrupt communication proceed out your mouth. 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 Come on. Let no corrupt communication proceed out your mouth. But that which is good. So how do you know if it's good? If it comes from God. If you can't share it with Jesus, you shouldn't share it with others. Come on, somebody. Amen. Pat on the back, preacher. That's a good word right there. If you can't share it with Jesus, you shouldn't share it with others. Good to use of the edifying. The word edifying means to edit and build up. That which may minister grace to the hearers and grieve not. Y'all need to say this seven times with me too. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God 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 and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. The problem with the American church is they are grieving the spirit of God. They are doing it their way. How do they know? Because they know exactly what they're going to do because their pamphlet says so. At 10 a.m. worship starts at 1015. Brother Barkamouth gets to tear a testimony. At 1018, he's done. Pastor stands up. Let us all sing 377 and 445. And everybody skip the third verse because you're not a Baptist. If you don't, you're not a Methodist. If you don't, and you go through and we're trying to get out by noon because we got to beat everybody to the buffet. But you're grieving God. If you're thinking about what you're doing after church, you're not involved right now in what God is doing. And there's a problem. You need to come to the altar. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed and led unto the day of redemption. Wow, you may be seated. I want to talk to you today. If you'll pull that that picture up, my brother. I want to talk to you today. About closing The open door. For many a times, I didn't know that I had open doors in my life to the enemy. I said, man, my household's good. It's okay. Everything's fine. I'm living for God. I'm preaching sometimes services seven days a week. Revival's happening. I mean, thousands and thousands of people I've had the opportunity to lead to the Lord. Do you understand that? But yet I had an open door in my household and I didn't know it. I had an open door in my household for the devil to get a hold of my family. While everybody else was being lifted up, while everybody else was being helped out, my wife was struggling with depression, ready to blow her head off. My children were treating their mommy like dirt and daddy wasn't home. Another open door is that cell phone charger right there. If a little kid put that thing in their mouth, they die. Better pull that out the wall right now. I've become to the point that I don't care how you react to my sermons anymore. Because they're not mine to give anyway. I've always been the person that asked daddy what I was supposed to preach. You got that. But sometimes I felt bad after I went home. When people felt bad after I went home, God said, don't worry about it. He said, it don't matter who leaves and who goes and who stays. He said, as long as you've got me, you've got it all. And I know some people in this place that say, Jason, I don't care if you preach the paint off the walls. I'm staying with you. 
Because God is with you, son. And they've told me and I've seen it and I've seen God move. But I want you to know today, if you've come here to be dignified, if you've come here to, for, for someone not to hurt your feelings, you've come to the wrong place. Look at your neighbor and say, wrong place. I believe that there are many things that we leave an open door to. And I believe that we had an open door even as a child. And that door never was closed. And the devils came into our life. And they've been exiting and going in and going out. That's why you could go up somewhere. And all of a sudden someone would be talking to you. And you get ticked off for no reason. Or you walk down the street. And you're praying, you're a Holy Ghost filled believer. You're praying, Lord, please help my eyes, help my eyes. I don't want to lust anymore. I don't want to lust anymore. And then somebody walks by and you're like, and your wife's like, I'm going to kill you. I was that man. I was a whoremonger. I was a luster. I was filled with pride and self-promotion. Daddy ripped that out of me and killed me on an altar and said, you better live for me, son, because I got a plan for your life. Amen. Rip that straight out of me. But, you know, I didn't know that the door came open when I was able to see pornography as a young man. Some of y'all have not renounced that. If you've watched pornography, you have an open door in your life. If you haven't renounced pornography and asked God to forgive you of that sin and that generational curse, some of it came from your parents and your parents' parents, okay? It came down the line. Now, I'm about to say some things, and don't just believe what I'm saying. You better check me. Be better in Facebook because their fat checker is off. Their fact checker is for the liberals. Amen. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Don't get mad at me. Hallelujah. But it is. Because when you start saying something about Jesus, they shut you up and shut you down. I'm living proof of it. And let me just say, I'm not a Democrat and I'm not a Republican. Okay. Let me just say that right now. But I will not stand for anybody that stands for abortion. I will not stand for anybody that stands for gay marriage. I will not stand for anybody that said, let me tell you something. We need to believe that our children have the right to live. And God created one race and it's called the human race. So enough of the stupid stuff about black lives matter. All lives matter. Get that out your house. If you're black and you got a black lives matter movement, that stuff is of the devil. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care. You come to West Virginia. Come on. The devil ain't touching this. And I'll die for Jesus anyway. And all it's going to do is spark people to get churches started up. Come on, somebody. All lives matter. There is not a black race. There is not a white race. There's not a Native American race or an Asian race. There is the human race. We just look different, but we all bleed the same blood. So I'm going to teach you today and just talk to you. And I hope that's cool. And if it's not, I'm going to do it anyway. Tough. Come on, somebody. The first place that most children have the open door is Disney movies. Not everything that looks innocent is innocent. And as grandparents, you might not be able to control what your grandchildren watch at their home. But you darn sure can control what they watch at your home. Let's talk about the little mermaid for a moment. Does it look, I mean, it's, it seems very innocent, but then you talk about King Neptune, which Neptune is a God, false God, but he's considered a God. And if you'll turn with me to first Samuel chapter five, verses one through eight, I want to read to you something about this because you might say, well, the moment that the Bible tells me that it's wrong for me to watch mermaids and mermen, I'll cut it off. And you might have went online and did a search and said, look, there's nowhere in the Bible that it says mermaids, but it does say unicorns. But as a matter of fact, there is somewhere in the Bible that it talks about mermaids and mermen. And you're about to read it. First Samuel chapter five, and it's hidden and the reason you don't know, because half of y'all don't study. Amen or ouch. The Philistines took the ark of God and brought it to Ebenezer and Ashad. Now, the ark of God was the ark of the covenant that had the mercy seat, that had the Holy Spirit sealed inside and the tablets of Moses, the Ten Commandments. Okay. If anybody touched that ark, they would be killed immediately, annihilated, dead. Why? Because it was holy and they were not. When the Philistines took the Ark of God, they underline, circle, highlight, Dagon. 
and they said it by Dagon. Dagon is not a person. He is a false god. When they of Ashad arose early on the morrow, behold, Dagon was fallen on his face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. So it's kind of like saying nowadays they brought it to the house of Buddha and that fat man fell down. Come on, somebody. Amen. That's kind of like what he was saying. The house of Dagon. He fell on his face on the earth before the ark of the Lord. In other words, even a false God had to worship Jesus. Come on, somebody. Amen. That also showed us us that the devil has no power in the power of an almighty, all powerful and all knowing God. Amen. And so they took Dagon and set him in his place again. So they set him back up. And when they arose early on tomorrow morning, behold, Dagon was fallen on his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. And the head of Dagon and both of the palms of his hands were cut off upon the threshold. What is God saying to us? All idols need cut off by the head and need cut off by the hands and feet in our lives. And only the stump of Dagon was left to him. Now, neither came the priest of Dagon nor any that come into Dagon's house to tread on the threshold of Dagon and Ashad unto this day. Let's keep going. But the hand of the Lord was heavy upon Ashad. And he destroyed them and he smote them with emrods and even Ashad as the coast thereof. We're almost there. Verse seven and eight. And when the men of Ashad saw that it was so, they said, the ark of God of Israel shall not abide with us for his hand is sore upon us and upon Dagon, our little G O D God. Dagon was a false God. Question. Who here has their cell phone? Grab your cell phone. Type in Dagon. Make sure you put little g o d when you put his name because he's not a God. They sent therefore and gathered all the lords of the Philistines unto them and said, what shall we do? Wes, you could actually pull that up, can't you? You can put that on the screen for me, can't you? It's a picture of a merman. You got it? Right here it is. It's a picture of a merman. Dagon is a merman. He's a false god. My wife. I'm going to call her out because I love her. When in doubt, cast it out. Amen. My wife and I had the hardest fight. Not fist fight, but spiritual battle. Because she just loved that little Elsa and that little Frozen movie for Bella. Bella had the cutest little dresses. And we just bought them. She just bought them, not we. She just bought them. And I came home with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And God said, you get that devil worship out of your house. And you get it out now. Beauty and the Beast. The theme is magically this man is transformed into a beast, which God says, don't take the mark of the. And magic spells is cast to enter into the palace and everybody is changed. What about Snow White and the seven dwarfs? The queen gives Snow White a poisoned apple. It symbolizes, although we know that Eve did not eat an apple, we look at it as an apple on the fruit because we had to display some type of fruit in our mind. We know that the devil gave Eve an apple or a fruit to eat from. It's the same symbolism that the queen was the devil and Snow White was Eve. Mm, come on. Frozen one and frozen two uses spiritual witchcraft, wind, earth, water, fire, ice to cast spells. I bind all of them in the name of Jesus. How about how many of y'all ever watched the movie Moana? Little kids movie. Seems to be cool. If you look in there, you'll see the mountain that lifts up the hands. It's a false God. You'll see the lava that comes out and it's a person. That's a false volcano God, which is also the God called Malik. In which the Israelites served falsely and aborted their children to the God Malak in the lava so that the lava would not come up and kill them. And if you look in Moana, the O on Moana is a swirl, like a spiral. Somebody say open door. 
It's a spell swirl of, mit- of witchcraft. You say, well, pastor, I just don't believe all this nonsense. Well, listen, go ahead. Let your family be possessed by demons and let them be afflicted by curses. You say, my family acts good. Oh yeah, really? You don't have any problems? We all have problems. Get it out your house. I'm telling you, listen. Many a people want to hold hands with Jesus and praise God while they're dancing with the devil. You know what that does to you? That brings condemnation in your home. My Bible tells me that you shall love the Lord thy God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. So when your mind can't understand how these things are bad, you should say, God... I don't understand it, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm open to hearing what Pastor Jason is saying, and I'm willing to listen, and I'm going to go home and study it myself, and if you'll convict my spirit, go ahead and say it. If you'll convict my spirit, I'll get it out of my house, and I'll tell everybody about it. When in doubt, cast it out. That portal on Moana, that O, it opens doors. Remember, we got to close. Pull that picture up. We got to close the open door. I want you to know that demons are like flies. If they're in your house, you can get them out of your house by simply opening up the door, telling them to get out in the name of Jesus, making them get out, and you can close the door. Many people are afraid when a demon comes out of somebody, if it's going to get in Lemuel, or if it's going to get in in James, or if it's going to get in anybody else. How can it? It can't. A demon can't transfer to somebody else unless there is a... Flies can't get in your house unless you got cracks and windows open and doors open. Come on, somebody. Amen. And so leave no doors open to the devil in your life, not to mention Peli, the goddess of the Hawaiian mountain. Tifi, Tefiti, Teka. These are all demigods. And you know, he himself calls himself a demigod. But yet Christians watch that junk and think it's okay. You say, Pastor, what are my children going to watch? Maybe they don't need it. How am I going to occupy their time? Maybe you'll be who the person God called you to be and spend time with them this time. Walk by favor. And I get it. All of us are busy. I'm the busiest person that I know other than Greg. I'm going to tell you right now. But that's the problem. I've been too busy for everybody, but not my family. I fasted for eight days. And Saturday, the Lord woke me up on the eighth day of fast. And I thought I was going 40 days and I'm glad I wasn't. And he, Cause I'm gonna tell you, I was, I was dreaming about, I was dreaming about Twinkies and Ho-Hos about that time. It was like, I had a cast. I wake up in the middle of the night, like devil get out of my trees. The couch was looking like it was, like it was edible, man. I'm telling you, I'm like, I wonder how good that sucker tastes about right now. My, and, and it did never failed every day. My wife was like, honey, what, what do you want to eat? I forgot. I'm sorry. I forgot. I'm sorry. Can you make me something to eat though? (laughs) I mean, it was, it was terrible. I say all this to say this, God woke me up and he said, okay, you could break your fast for a moment, but I want you to take, I want you that that's, that's dagging false God in the name of Jesus. We cast that out right now. Let's, uh, Get one of our cameramen to put that camera on, on that or show it online. If you could do that to show them this false God. Okay. Looks like King Trident, don't it? Disney's not stupid at all. They make millions off of magic. I'm telling you. Oh, I think they're putting it online, buddy. I don't think you'll have to do anything. Clarify that though, Wes. Do we need to move it? Okay, turn it back. Good. Hallelujah. Hmm. So I took my wife out to dinner. And then it was so funny because I asked for apple juice, right? And as they poured the apple juice in, the Holy Spirit spoke to me, did he not, Lizzie? He said, somebody's going to come up and they're going to think that apple juice is beer. You better put it in a different cup. Don't leave a stumbling block for believers because it looked yellow. So, sure enough, my dear sister Sherry Hall showed up that used to work with me. This is apple juice, by the way. (laughs) Because the devil was going to try to get her to think that that was beer. Although there was no fizz or anything. But when you fast, you can hear the word of the Lord. Many of you say you don't hear the voice of God because you don't fast. Because you don't pray. Because you don't read your Bible enough. Because you don't have a close, close relationship with God. 
You love him. I'm not doubting that. I promise you, if you feel you're close with God, you can get closer. Listen, the list goes on and on. Let me, let me just give, let me just name these off and you could go back and check it out. Turning Red, Disney movie, Soul, Onward, Zombies, Descendants, Emperor's New Groove, Tangled, Luca, Princess and the Frog, Inside and Out, Cinderella, Rava, Encanto, Peter Pan, Hercules, Enchanted, Atlantis, Aladdin, Black Cauldron, Fantasia, Sword in the Stone, Milan. All of those have witchcraft in them. Every one of them. Smurfs is a big one. They encant real spells. As a matter of fact, my wife and I one time watched the Smurfs because we were looking for good movies for our kids. And that night we dreamed of demons and devils in our house. And I woke up, if I'm lying, I'm dying. I woke up and I seen this demon standing over my bed about ten, eight or 10 foot tall with solid green eyes and a crossbow pointed right at me. And I, I commanded that thing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You come out of my house now. And he just, phew, vanished like it was just pulled away and lizzie and i said we did a wrong move there watching that stupid thing we never put that junk on in our house again hulu netflix disney prime disney plus all that type of stuff you got to watch what you put on your tvs why what is a tv we call it a tv but back in the day those old folks those old timers called it a television you know what a television is tell a vision It tells you a vision of what they want you to see and what they want you to get. And it opens a door to demons inside of your life or can open a door to the Lord inside of your life. So I can be on Facebook Live, which is television, and tell a vision about what God is doing just like we are today. And thousands of people are hearing the gospel today and hearing how their children and their family could be set free. Say, Pastor, what I do if I watched all this, you repent. That sounds like a bunch of religion. Try it yourself. I'm telling you, my household don't fight anymore. We don't fight. We don't fight at all. But we bickered and complained every day until God delivered our household. Pokemon. You ever notice at the top it has an element? What is it? Remember, witches use stones and elements to channel energy like electricity, water, fire, All these different things, earth to fight with each other. Listen, I know a lot of this because before I knew Christ, I was into witchcraft and warlockism. I was satanic and I was an atheist and God saved my life and pulled me out of it, okay? So I know witchcraft is true because I did it before I knew Jesus and even sacrificed crows on an altar. And the Lord forgave me for that, amen? But I'm telling the truth if I'm lying, I'm dying, okay? Let's look at 1 Chronicles chapter 10, verse 13. You say, well, pastor, does God really care if Christians deal with magic? Somebody say, close the open door. First Chronicles chapter 10, verse 13. So Saul, read this with me. So Saul died for his transgressions, which he committed against the Lord. What were they? Even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not. For asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it. What is a familiar spirit? A spirit of witchcraft. Some of y'all keep telling everybody you've seen your great grandmother and she came back from the dead. And you talk to her. What a familiar spirit is, is they are, they're a spirit that was sent out. At the beginning of time to follow your family line and your bloodline. Demons are people without bodies. Do you understand me? They talk, they walk, they see, they hear, they feel. But they don't have a human body. That's why they possess yours. And they were sent to your bloodline. Through the sins of your family. And they followed your family. So they know what your family does. They know your family's names. They know your family's birth date. They even know your family's social security and credit card numbers. That's why medians and psychics can go on and they can see into the spirit realm, which they really are. And they're getting information from demons and they're using Wicca and witchcraft and all these different things to hear. Thus says Satan instead of thus says Jesus. And these people are not Christian people and will perish in hell unless they repent. I promise you that. 
1 Samuel 15, 23. How about this one? You want, you want to know how many parents we got in the house right now today? Raise your hand. Raise your feet too. You ever walk through Walmart? Ah, daddy. Ah, daddy. Ah, you don't love me. I hate you. Ah, I want my Pokemon. Ah, I want this. Ah, I want that. Ooh. And they're just sitting there crying and screaming and they're making a fuss. You think it's funny, but all of y'all see it or you've went through it. Can I get a witness? I don't allow that junk in my house. I looked at my son. I cast the devil out of him right there in the parking lot. I don't care. Listen, I thoroughly believe you spare the rod, you spool the child. I don't believe you should ever beat your child. Anybody that beats a child is not a man. He deserves to go to jail, amen? But I believe you should spank their butts when they need it. I don't care who's watching. Somebody get a witness, amen? I just give them the look. I dare you. Mommy give them the look. They're like, mommy going to give in. Daddy give them the look. They're like, watch out. So they'll try to get me away to a different aisle and be like, mama. Mama, you know I love you, mama. You know you're the best mama in the whole world. You know you got the prettiest green eyes I ever did saw them I ever saw in life, mama. You know what that is? It's called rebellion. And you know what rebellion is? It's the sin of witchcraft. Do you see that? It's the sin of witchcraft. Yeah, Holy Ghost just hit you, didn't he? It's this rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. How about this? When your pastor asks you to do something, but you won't come in line and authority with your pastor, when your pastor is preaching from the word of God, you got witchcraft in your life. And it better come up and it better come out. Because rebellion, the word rebel means to, to go against. And when your children go against you, and God puts you to have dominion over everything. God called the dads to be the head of the household and the, and, the, and the wives to be their helpmate and to stand side by by side each other. But guess what? Most of the dads are sitting back drinking a beer while there is no structure in the house and mom is trying to do it all. Shame on us. How come 90% of the women can come to church but the men never do? Because they won't stand up and be the rightful leaders of their home. But can I tell you, leaders of their home got to lead with their wife too because you are one. Don't ever think that you're better than your wife. The moment that you do, you better get to the altar and repent. Amen? More doorways that is open. Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball, Avatar, Dungeons and Dragons. I'm about to, some of y'all were in the Catholic religion. That is, that religion is an abomination to God. I'm telling you right now, and I'm going to give you scriptures to prove it. All y'all online that just said, oh, I'm cutting off. No, you better hold on and listen. You better hold on and listen. Here's Bible scriptures. Matthew 23, 9. Matthew 23, 9. What is their pastor called in the Catholic church? Father. Read this. Read it out loud. Come on. It's right on the screen. Now, did not Jesus even say the word father when he talked about Abraham? So then is the Bible contradicting itself or was God telling us a time where people would step into a confession booth and confess their sins to a man who is full of wickedness and adultery? And the reason that half of the, half of the, half of the priest sleep with little boys and touch people is because they're abstaining from sex when God said sex is good and it's to be with your wife. And you know, the Catholic church says that Peter, I'm getting ahead of myself. Peter was the first Pope, but remember their requirements of a Pope says that you cannot have a wife, but we know let me show you scripture for a moment. Mm. We know that Peter had a wife. I'm going to prove it to you. 
I'm going to have to go down the rest of it because it's in there. We'll, we'll get to it. We're going to that, look at your neighbor and say, that's for free for now. Go to Matthew 6, 7. This scripture says, do not use vain and, and profane repetitions because it leads to more ungodliness when you pray. How many of you know that if you wanted breakthrough, you had to get your rosary bead out and you had those, those sets of beads and you had to pray our fathers, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And by the way, they leave Jesus on the cross. Did he not come off the cross? A crucifix is of the devil. A cross is not. I'm proving to you. You say, how come nobody ever speaks about this? Because all the pastors in America, 90% of them are limp-wristed, no-spine preachers that got a bubble back that they're worried about whether somebody gets offended and trying to grow a denomination or a church and trying to fit into somebody else's ways and have so tight a skinny jeans that they can't even breathe. Looking like a woman, but talking like a man. When you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen does, for they think they will be heard for much speaking. How many of y'all know that the Catholics, they use all these vain repetitious prayers and you have to memorize all your prayers. How many prayers did you memorize, sister? There was good intentions with the prayers. I'm not condemning Catholics. I'm condemning the religion of Catholic church. There's no power in it. You said, then how come some people get delivered and, ex and demons get exercised through the Catholic church? Well, I am thankful for the Catholic church when they do that and they get some of them out because they still use the name of Jesus. It's not the power in the priest, it's the power in the name. Amen. Let me tell you something, a toddler can say Jesus name and there's proof of it. This week, my son, Matthew, got delivered from demons. If I'm lying, I'm dying. We were up here, and this man, this, he's 10 years old. I was praying for him. I put my hand on him, started praying for him. He grabbed a hold of my hands, and he picked me up off the ground. I'm 100 and, well, I was 165 pounds, but I've been fasting for eight days. Now I'm 140 pounds. Uh, true story, 40-something. I think I gained a little bit from Outback last night, but nonetheless, he picked me up like I was a piece of paper. I said, ah! I said, y'all get over here. Help me out. Hold this man down. He picked Pap up and you're like two something. Stand up, Pap. My 10 year old picked him up right here in this building. Thursday night Bible study. Truth or not truth. He had a devil. And the Lord said it won't come out until you fasted seven days. And I was on the sixth day, but he said a lot of them would. So that most of them came out. Caden got completely delivered. I believe with all my heart, unless the Lord shows otherwise. Amen. And Matthew had already been delivered before, but he kept going home and watching these Disney movies and playing Super Smash Bros. Our entire family played that and has Pokemon and has Wii Fit, which uses yoga. And yoga is of the devil. You say, what? Come on now, pastor. How can you say yoga is of the devil? Y'all men are like, I like watching yoga. I'm sure you do, you little lustful thing. <laughs> Come on, somebody. But it channels a kundalini spirit. It is an open door because what is it called? The downward dog. What does that do? It is a Eastern Hindu religion where they teach you meditation to meditate your body into a position of a dog to channel the Kundalini spirit to give you power and inner peace. And it's false. But we're back to the Catholic church. That was for free. I chased a squirrel for a moment. <laughs> Matthew, Matthew, Matthew got delivered. Matthew got delivered on the seventh day of fasting, but not before he embarrassed me in Gabe's. I went to Gabe's store. My dad said, here's a hundred bucks. Go pick me out some shirts. I was like, all right, man, thanks. So I picked him out $56 of shirts and gave him back to rest. Amen. And he looked sharp. He's supposed to be here today. If you're watching right now, dad, where are you at? Wake up, get up, get to church. Amen. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Tell him, say, Joe, get to church. You know, kick my rear after this. I don't care. Nonetheless. Dad was skeptical about this demonic deliverance stuff until dad was right there when Pastor Joe got delivered and he knew Joe was a godly man. He said he was either really good as an actor or that was the craziest thing I ever seen. <laughs> so, then, so then we go to Gabe's and my son starts manifesting and I, I start getting frustrated with him and the Lord said, what are you doing? There's a demon in him. Look at that demon, tell him you see him. So I looked at my 10 year old boy, Matthew, and I said, Matthew, which means gift from God. I said, Matthew. And he looked at me like this.
I bind that foul spirit of Leviathan because his head started turning and I'd been praying. See, I know the experience of the power of God. I'd been praying so long that I knew it was a demonic spirit. And he looked at me and he said, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. And he grabbed his fist and he punched me in the stomach. 10 years old. That's not my butt. That's not my boy. I said, I bind you. Put your hands down. His hands went. I said, I'm not, I am not getting CPS called here. The devil is a liar. You are not acting up. You are not acting out, but you getting out in the name of Jesus. I, I called Pap and Sue. I said, listen, meet me in my house in an hour. He's going down. <laughs> we get home. I get inside. My son kicks his shoes off like this. Where'd you learn that? I was starting to get intimidated. I'll be honest. If I'm lying, I'm dying. I was starting to get intimidated. He threw his fist up like this. Went to fight me. I said, you foul spirit, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Hands go down and his hands went. Put my hand on him, on his head. Put a Bible on his head and he just hit the floor. And he's just laying there. Six demons came up and out of him. Six, they spoke, came up and came out. If I'm lying, I'm dying. My dad was there to witness it. My phone was being blown up left and right. They were trying to stop the deliverance. And he picked all three of us off the ground. Ten-year-old man. It wasn't him. It was a demon. The Bible says when a demon leaves a person, it searches in the dry place trying to find an open door where the house is clean and swept. I'm on holy ground now. I took my shoes off. And when he finds the house clean and swept, he enters in the house, comes into the house and brings seven times worse demons than what he had. And that's exactly what happened with Matthew. Because I'm warning you, because I wasn't obedient to get this stuff out of my house. And the Lord said, if I continue to be disobedient, the devil would kill my children. It's how serious it is, guys. Matthew chapter six, verse seven says, don't use vain and propane reputations. Matthew 13, 55 through 56, Catholic worship. Listen to this. How many of y'all know that the Catholics worship Mary too? You were Catholic? Are you correct? Am I correct? Did you worship mother Mary? Stop it. I know you don't now, but let me tell you why. This is what they said. And they're talking to Jesus during this, okay? So if it was time to worship Mary, Jesus would have condoned that, but he didn't. It was an idolatry that came forward through the Catholic church and taught to the people, which by the way, the Catholic church didn't want them to have a Bible. Their average lay person couldn't have a Bible and couldn't even take communion, which is far from the word of God. Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not this the mother called Mary? And his brother and James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters, are they not all with him? From whence has all this man, all these things? But there's a little bit more here that I didn't write down, but it's in Matthew 13. Let me pull it up for you real quick. Uh, summarize that whole chapter, brother, for me, please. Go back to it. I wrote down one of the scriptures that it might be in the next one. We'll go back to it and I'll bring it back to you next week if, if I don't bring it today. But in this scripture, Jesus talks about not worshiping Mary. Okay, so I will bring that back to you in the name of Jesus and we'll even go live this week to share it with you because... The devil tried to get my notes off. It was like one o'clock in the morning. I was writing this stuff down. Nonetheless, let's go to the next point. First Timothy chapter two, verse five. Catholics pray to saints, but there is only one mediator between God and man that we pray. And his name is Jesus. Look, 
For there is one God and one mediator. What does mediator mean? One person that you can talk to God through. You can't pray through St. Peter. You can't pray through St. Paul. You can't pray through, pray through uh, you know, any of the popes or any of them. They're not holy like that. You can't pray through them. There's one. His name is Jesus. So cancel those people off your list. Amen. Luke 11, 27 through 28. And it came to pass a woman, as he spoke these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said, bless it. Oh, here it is. Here it is. This was the scripture that I thought I was talking about earlier. Thank you, Lord. You didn't fail me. You never do. Blessed is the womb. This is talking to Jesus. Blessed is the womb that bore you in the paps, which you have sucked or the breast that you have sucked from. Okay. Now watch this. They go to glorify Mary. And he says, yes, but rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. So they go to worship Mary during this time. And God said, yeah, that's good, but it's better. It's better. It's better to worship God and hear the word of God. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Matthew 26, 27. The Catholic church in in 1,200 to 19,700 AD forbidden the layman to have communion. But this is what he said. He took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink you all of it. God wants everybody to, to be in communion. But the Catholic church for the longest time, for hundreds and hundreds of years said, no, only the priest can take of communion. Bishops are not allowed to marry according to the Catholic church. The priest becomes unholy if he does that. The women are to abstain from marriage. You remember the Bible says in the last days that would happen? Let me prove it to you. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2 through 5. Listen, and this is just from the overflow of my time spending in prayer with God. Okay, I can go for months and months and months on the stuff that you got to get out of your house. And I'll probably at least go for another week on the stuff we got to get out of our house. Because a lot of stuff I haven't even got to touch on because some of y'all ain't involved in none of that cult nonsense right there. A bishop, here's the, the Bible plainly says that a bishop must have a wife. Look, a bishop must be blameless, the husband of one wife. How clear is that? But the Catholic church says you can't get married. You know, the Bible says that, that in the last days that people would, would abstain. He said, pearliest times would come. Men would be lovers of themselves, proud blo- blasphemers. They're, they're, they're always doing things for what they want instead of what God wants for them. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Hallelujah. Most Catholics believe that Peter was the first pope. Mark chapter 1 verse 30 proves that Peter had a wife. So all y'all Catholics with your mad faces getting all ticked off right now. Look at the scripture. It even says it in your Bible. Mark chapter 1 verse 30. Check it out. I believe the Catholic church is Babylon. And we've taught that in Revelation. But Simon's wife's Mother lay sick of a fever and Annan, they tell him of her. Simon, Simon, later named Peter. Simon's wife. So then by the Catholic church, Peter couldn't have been the first Pope because he'd be disqualified because he had sex. Huh? I don't know. I'll be honest. I don't know. No, you're good. All right, so let's talk about food for a moment. Food sacrificed to idols. I'm about to kick over a religious cow. Half of y'all might walk up and walk out. I don't care. I really don't. I'm not preaching for people to like me anymore. I'm tired of that. Tired of trying to be your friends. I'm, I'm your pastor. If you don't want me to be your pastor, don't make me to be your pastor. But if you want somebody that's going to tell you the truth and not blur the lines and not, not sit there and try to smudge things together then you come to the right place. So check this out. Again, let me confess. I used to celebrate Halloween. And even after I got away from Halloween, I celebrated trunk or treat. It's not from God. 
And let me explain why. Halloween is the holiest unholy day. It's the unholy day, but the holiest for Satan, where he gets the most of his power. Y'all know it's called All Hallows Eve. Witchcraft comes so much more powerful at October 31st because in order for witchcraft to work, you must believe in it. And so when the little kids dress up like demons and goblins and you're like, well, I just, let me tell you something. I protected this all the time. I just dressed my son up like a superhero. Spider-Man, Batman, the people defeating the devil. Listen, Marvel comics are full of demons. Think about Thor. What is he called? The God of thunder. But yet our Bible tells us have no other gods before him. We're like, well, I'm just going to go buy my kids candy and give them candy. They deserve candy. Watch out what candy you allow them to consume. If I'm lying, I'm dying. We were in a conference uh, in Mount Juliet, Tennessee this last week and, and, and this week. And the Lord moved in such a powerful way. And pa- I believe it was Pastor Schaefer was telling us this testimony. He was casting a demon out of somebody. And this demon started talking to him and literally said, he said, you tell me. Because they prayed for hours and tried to figure out how to get this thing out. And he said, you tell me how you got in. And this guy looked up and he said, By, y'all, some of y'all are going to get tripped out. Be like, that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. He said he didn't pray over his food at the Chinese restaurant before he ate. And they sacrificed it to a God. That's why the devil wants you slack concerning your prayers. You're like, good bread, good beat, good God, let's eat. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Don't be slack on your, on, your, on your daily prayers. Don't be slack on praying to the Father. Somebody say, open door needs closed. I'm telling you, we could go on for hours, years, and days and, 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 and never touch the surface of how many demons. There is billions of demons and devils in the church. There are a lot of pastors that are filled with pride, filled with anger, filled with sexual lust, and they're only out there for self-fame, and they're trying to, they got a side chick on the side. I've seen it, folks. I've seen it with my own eyes. I was at a church, prayed for the pastor. For him to get delivered, he got delivered, went back to lust, went back to other women, had a side chick on the side, and had a wife. And it came all out in the open. I'm telling you, you got to watch who you sit under and not just go somewhere because they have comfy seats, bright lights, and music. I love lights. I love music. I love getting jumpy and hype for Jesus, okay? You know why you love that? Because you are hardwired for heaven. Heaven has thunderings and lights. It, ha- it, ha- it has all that. Heaven has all that. It has all these pretty lights and everything and has really, really loud music. I love it. We're hardwired for heaven and that's why we love it. But you sit under pastors who are just limp-wristed, who think it's okay to marry a man with a man and a woman with a woman and say that, that, that sexual immorality is okay and that they could, they could, be, they could be part of the worship team while they're, while, they're, while they're having sex outside of marriage. You ain't coming to this church being a leader doing none of that junk. I had to repent. I thought that this was like a, a, a religious thing. I said, I mean, y'all folks are just way too religious. Until I see the demons that came from all of it. The devil ain't stupid. He knows if he could get you to consume that different type of candy at that time that has the mummies on it and everything else. Don't think that witches aren't smart. They, they're real. And they put hexes and they put vexes and spells and everything. Because the children and the family are trying to get after their lives. They want them to die. They want them to perish. They want them to never, ever, ever come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. You need to repent for opening that door for your family. I'm going to give you just a little bit more and we'll close out. Hmm. Anything with witches, zombies, and things like that, any, any food, don't consume it. How many of y'all know that there's this potato chip out right now called the voodoo chips? Are we stupid enough to consume that? A long time ago, the devil used to just hide. But because the power of the world has become so strong, 
You don't even have to hide anymore. He's right in front of our face. They legalized marijuana, almost every single state in the United States of America. And they got CBD oils and all this. And you're like, well, it grew from the ground. It's okay. It's better than Percocets and Lortab. Listen, let me tell you something. Poison berries grow from the ground too, stupid. Don't take it. The problem is you don't believe enough in the power of prayer. Said I prayed I didn't get healed. You didn't have enough faith. Well, that's appalling to me. I don't care if it is. Get more faith. Do not under any circumstance go smoke dope and think you're right with Jesus because you're wrong with Jesus. You cannot think that you have a relationship that is right with God and be, and, and be smoking doobies and, and doobie snacks out the corner of your, of, your, of your shed at your grandma's house. I don't care who you are. They're not right with God. They need to repent. Seek the Father with all their heart. What if I gave you a water when you were thirsty and it was the coldest water, but it had a little bit of dog crap in it? You say, well, I just don't like what you said. I just don't care if you like it. Amen. Come on, somebody. That is what we're teaching our children. That as long as it's just a little bit, it's not bad. They're just doing a little bit. No, stop coddling the demon. Come up and come out in the name of Jesus. I don't care how many followers I lose. I don't care how many likes I don't get. I don't care how many shares don't go. If you guys get free, then who the son made free? My God is free indeed. I had to try not to preach because daddy wanted me to teach this morning. And I know that sometimes teaching is boring. And sometimes you got a spirit of lethargy that will make you go to sleep when the truth is being told. Let me tell you some ways that demons come out of people. Let me just give you a list here. Expected manifestations of demons, screaming, sweating, burping, causing, sneezing, yawning. Man, when the Holy Ghost hits on somebody, it happens. Sudden urge to go to the bathroom. All of a sudden, you use the bathroom before you got there. Then when the Holy Ghost starts speaking, you got to get out of service multiple times. He don't want you to hear the truth. And even, even passing gas, falling, trembling, spitting, cursing, sobbing, runny and bloody noses, watering and itchy eyes, lightheadedness, tingling, heat and burning sensations, bitter taste, ringing ears, muscle spasms, body pains, headaches, stiff hands, itching, nervousness, twitching, vomiting. I, I'm going to tell you, most people that get rid of demons, they start vomiting. I'm telling you, I've seen it left and right. Dizziness, violent outbursts. People get mad at the preaching of the word of God. They stand up. Blank you, Pastor Jason. Blank you in your blankety blank church. Well, let me tell you something. That devil coming all the way up, and it's coming all the way out in Jesus' name. I had a church, and I'm going to call you out, you foul church, you foul spirit. You ain't loving God. I had a church that said they were at, they were at a spirit of life. They were at Spirit of Life's church and they were downing our church. They were downing our church because we believe in deliverance. And they said on live television to the people, and I'll call it up and I'll call it out. I don't care. They said on live television to the people, don't go to that church. They're full of demons. They have more deliverance services than they do salvations. Well, let me tell you something. If your church would have more deliverance service, you'd see salvation. You know what the American church wants to do? They want, to keep, they want to kick the person out that has demons and leave the demon inside. I'm going to tell you, I've seen it all. I've been preaching the gospel for 14 years. I haven't seen it all, forgive me, Lord, but I've seen a lot. And when I was preaching, I've seen demons manifest, start screaming out right in rage. I went back, put my hands on them. They drop out like a fly, cut, and they start throwing up, convulsing on the floor, having a seizure. I bind that thing. It comes up. It comes all the way out. They get free, get delivered, get set free. I'm going to tell you, if you have not experienced deliverance, you have demons in your life and you need forgiven, you need cleansed, and you need set free. Somebody say, close the door. How about tightness in your chest like you're going to have a heart attack, a choking sensation. The choking sensation, I'm not going to teach a lot on it because the devil will be too smart not to do it with you when we go to cast it out. The choking sensation comes out. And let me tell you, it wasn't the Spirit of Life Church that said it. It was the pastor they allowed in their pulpit. The man of God took it down and I'm thankful for it. He said he didn't know. I believe him. Tension, peace, heavy breathing, drooling, foaming at the mouth, roaring, stomach cramps, dry heaving, wretcheding, skin irritation, and laughter. I might as well broke. I recognize that this town is a town. And, and at first I was like, 
I don't know if I want to do this, Lord. What if people try to kill me? What if everybody gets mad at me? Because I said this, and especially the people in this town, I recognize this town as a town full of Freemasons. That isn't a cult, and it's demonic. If you have any ties with it, you need to get it out. I recognize there are good people that are a part of that cult, but it is a cult. And I'm sure a lot of people's getting ticked off right now, getting mad. I don't care. Two flips of wood and nickel. I don't. I'm not allowing the devil to stay ex- unexposed in the church any longer. I don't care who threatens to shoot me. Listen, I'm a pistol packing preacher. I got a, I got a gun right in my, ch- I got a gun right in my chest pocket that I wear every day. Everywhere I go. And I believe in my amendment. But I believe in the word of God more than anything. Friends, I come to you today as a mere man. I figure if I'm going for it, I might as well go for broke. I come to you as a mere man who loves Jesus. Not a hate preacher, but I hate the devil. And I hate his demons. And I hate how the church has stayed for so long in depression and in anxiety and they've been, they've, been, they've been wanting to blow their head off. And they've been sick. You have a sickness you can't get rid of. You tried and tried and tried and tried and tried. But you didn't know that it was a demon. You need to release yourself from it. And we're going to give the opportunity for salvation. And then afterwards, I'm going to go ahead and do a deliverance service. Holy Spirit said to And all that want to stay can stay. And all that don't want to stay don't have to. Let me tell you something. I love you guys. I love you guys. God loves you. I have a sister, Megan, that just come all the way, drove all the way from Pennsylvania to be baptized in the river. We're going to do that baptism. We're going to do that baptism. Were you planning to stay for the night service too or no? Good. So directly after deliverance, we're going to do her baptism. And anybody else that wants baptized, I didn't know she was showing up. I'm going in the water just like this. Come on, somebody. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Guys, I believe that many of you have opened doors for your family and you didn't know it. And I believe it's time. That the men stand up and be men of God and not men of themselves. You could say you love Jesus all you want and crack a cold beer on a lawnmower. But let me tell you something. They said in that day, Lord, did I not cast out devils? Did I not speak with new tongues? And he said unto them, depart from me for I never knew you. You can never base your relationship with Jesus based on what you're doing. You've got to base your relationship with Jesus based on what he's doing in you. Nobody will ever convince me that they have been saved. There is no salvation without transformation. You understand? None of us are perfect. We are all sinners saved by the grace of God. I don't believe you save yourself. This is not a works-based church. I believe that you get to heaven based on giving your heart and soul to Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. But friends, I believe that when you gave your heart to Jesus, you don't look like the world anymore. I'm living proof of that. The first thing that came out of my mouth when I didn't know Christ is F you and I'm going to blow your head off. You want to mess with me? And I would too. Because I was devil possessed. But when God came inside my heart and when he radically changed me, I said, Jesus, I give it all to you. Wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to say, that Jesus, I will do. If you're in this house this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is the day of salvation. Listen, you can walk an aisle, you can say a prayer, but unless you get it in your spirit, you're going to miss it by 18 inches. It's going to get here, but never get here. So pray with all of your heart. 
Come to the altar, repent of your sins. Pray with all of your heart. Come on. If you need Jesus in your life, come to the altar, repent of all of your sins. If you, if you have opened a door to the devil, come to the altar, repent of all of your sins. I'm telling you guys, you don't need a pastor to lead you to Christ. You need Jesus to lead you to himself. Come on. Give him everything. Give him your heart. Give him your soul. Give him your mind. Give him your body. Give him your spirit. Give him everything. Give him all. He is all that he says he is. He will do everything that he said he will do. He is our alpha the omega the beginning the end the first and the last he is the great i am he is not the great i might he is the one who can do all things and and will have all things done with him he is the great and omnipotent god he is our guaranteed overnight delivery he is our great overwhelming deity he is jehovah jireh the lord our provider he is jehovah nisi the god who reigneth in victory he is jehovah shalom the god of peace he is yahweh he is yeshua hamashiach Jesus the Christ hallelujah he is Emmanuel that is God with us he is the great I am the bright and morning star and he is the answer to your problems this morning and here in this little church with a big fire and a big passion for Jesus may you be cleansed by the power of the blood and the word of the Lord may you feel his presence like you never have before. May you understand the authority that you have in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord. Say, Pastor, how do I accept Jesus? Repent of your sins. Tell Daddy, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for every open door that I've ever opened in my life. I'm sorry for being wretched. Sorry for every mistake I've ever made in my heart. I'm sorry for taking the glory and taking the shame. And I just ask you to please, Daddy, forgive me. Say, Father, I believe you sent Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. And I believe that he rose again. I believe he's seated at your right hand, making intercession for me. Tackle the enemies in my life. Touch my heart and make me whole. Fill me to capacity with your Holy Spirit. Jesus, mighty name. There's some of you in here this morning that's been praying that you want the prayer language of tongues. You want the gifts of tongues. You want to you feel the fire of God in your life like you never have before. I'd like to lay hands and pray for you. I'd like to anoint you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you come to the altar, stand up and allow God to just move in your life. If you want the Holy Spirit so strong that you, that, that you could just walk into a room and the room is transformed because of the Lord that's inside of you, then come to the altar. I got my prayer warriors already starting to get out of their seats right now. Hallelujah. My brother wants it. Come on. Some of y'all going to see this and you're like, my God, I want that too. Lift your hands to heaven. The Bible says that if your earthly father knows how to give good gifts, how much more will your heavenly father Look me in the eye, son. Give the Holy Spirit to them that ask. Are you ready? You won't fill with the gift of tongues. You won't fill with the power of the Holy Spirit. Look to heaven. Your redemption is here. I'm not your redeemer, but I know the one who is. Pray with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I ask in the name of Jesus, the mighty, all-powerful, 
all prevailing name of Jesus, that you fill me with the Holy Spirit. Give me the gift of tongues. Give me your power in Jesus' name. Fire of God. Shabba basoro momo sekeredi ara mama tariya.